Good afternoon. Today is Friday, the 25th of January, 2013, and this is Brian Shannon speaking from AlphaTrends.net. We had another positive week for the markets. For the most part, the S&P 500 uh, did finish with a gain of 1.2%. Uh, NASDAQ was down slightly. Uh, Apple weighed heavily on it, of course, but we had some other good uh, responses to earnings in there as well. So fortunately, it's not just an Apple market, but we had the Russell 2000 and the financials continue to outperform uh, the rest of the market. So let's take a look at the action. We came into this week thinking that uh, the market was having a good rally and that as long as it held above that 148.50, uh, I'm sorry, the 147.50 level, that as long as it held above 147-ish, that the market should be considered as innocent till proven guilty. I think that's still the case for next week, although our range is now really uh, the, the key band of support should be found between 148.50 and 149. So as long as we can hold above this level next week, we remain innocent till proven guilty. If we get down into that, area though I think the light turns a little bit cautious as I posted on uh, alphatrends.net on Thursday I thought that the market was maybe due for a little bit of a uh, uh, pullback at least a time correction and we continued to move higher here again today up another half a percent so when we have a rising five-day moving average we still want to look at the market as innocent till proven guilty the buyers are in control of the intermediate term time frame although we can get some short-term pullbacks down to that five-day moving average it doesn't make sense to position yourself for those except for day trades. So if there was any uh, uncertainty about that or how the different time frames interact with each other, um, that's the way you want to look at it as the intermediate term is innocent till proven guilty um, and the daily time frame innocent till proven guilty while we're above a rising 10, 20, and 50 day moving average. So we have a very healthy market still. We're, uh, we've, we've breached some of these prior uh, important areas, of course. We've broken past those. And the key level that we would be looking for this market to kind of gravitate towards still is near about that 152.5 to 153. It doesn't mean we will get there on this rally, but as long as we have the higher highs and higher lows and key levels of support holding, as we did for the second consecutive week, then we want to remain uh, bullish towards this uh, market. Now, the NASDAQ's a little bit different here because we've been in this range, basically, of 67.5 on the uh, upside down to about 66.10, 66.50 was the level we were looking at. Um, I, I had mentioned that I thought if we could get above 67.50 and hold above there, that it looked like this market was probably heading up towards about the uh, 68.5 uh, to 69 level. Well, it got above it, but it didn't hold uh, after the market gap down, of course, when Google, re uh, excuse me, Apple reported earnings. So we find ourselves kind of back into the same area. The uh, NASDAQ for the week was really Really, it was just down, um, well, 0.1 percent. So very uh, slight loss for the week. But we're back into this range, and I think the focus needs to continue to be uh, as long as we remain above this band of support in here, which is 66.10 to 66.50, same exact area we were holding, uh, talking, giving the benefit of the doubt to last week. That the buyers remain in control as long as we remain above that. Getting into this zone, we get a little bit cautious. Breaking down below it, I think that you should be getting stopped out of a lot of your stocks and harvesting the profits as the market dictates and tells you to not as uh, you know you just not arbitrarily so the Nasdaq we want to see hold again 6610 to 6650 Russell 2000 uh, continues again to really outperform here on the upside and someone asked me this week why am I so bullish about the uh, Russell 2000 well it's the most bullish uh, index there is as it is up at all-time highs and it's composed of two 2000 stocks which gives us a much broader uh, picture of what the average you know mid cap type stock is doing and they're doing really well here as this market closed right up near the highs for the week the key level next week that we want to see hold in here would be uh, $89 a share um, well you know that, that's kind of an intermediate term level we've got a rising five-day moving average but 89 I think is going to be an important level last week what we were looking for was for 87.50 to 88 hold so so if we break below 89, I think it would make sense for the market to pull back in towards that level, and that should uh, be sufficient.
position to probably get you out of some of your positions uh, based on uh, you know prudent management of your stops. The semiconductors remained above that 34 level for the week, and again the key level we were talking about was 3390 uh, to I'm sorry 3385 up to 34 dollars a share. Um, that was our key band. We kind of broke into that area and, and held above it. So I, I think that next week it's the same exact thing. If we can hold above 38, 30, sorry, thirty-three dollars and eighty-five cents to the thirty-four dollar zone, then we give the benefit of the doubt to the buyers. And it's looking like this resistance is holding as support um, and that it should be heading up north of thirty-five dollars a share, thirty, you know, thirty-five and a half, thirty-six even. The uh, analysis here this week and every week is brought to you by Real Tick. Real Tick is the one who sponsors the YouTube videos each Friday so check them out at uh, realtick.com and let's take a look now at the financials the financials uh, continue to uh, add to their gains and they're up at multi-year highs as, as we have observed they'd uh, broken this resistance and they continue to move and looking like they still have the potential to make it up towards that 18 and a half to 19 dollar level uh, again I don't think it would necessarily happen on this drive higher but we do have have a bullish trend here uh, firing really on all cylinders we continue to hold above key levels last week we were thinking that uh, uh, really the market needed to hold uh, above that 1695 level it did that now I think our key area that we want to see hold is about seventeen dollars and twenty cents uh, we would you know this 1730 really uh, if we break below that then we're likely to test that 17 seventeen dollars and twenty cent level and you know whether you trade the uh, XLF or if you're uh, an FAS trader or FAZ which is the triple long and triple shorts um, you know you you can see that there's a lot more action in the FAS which is the triple long financials and you know if you're going to be looking at this I, I, I don't really think that trading the XLF really makes a lot of sense because it's just so slow but this one you have to be aware of that these triple levered funds are definitely not appropriate for a lot of people and there's a lot of risks that you may not understand just based on the structure. So I would encourage you to take a look at, uh, you know, Google those and see what they're all about there. But they're, you know, they're good trading vehicles. Let's talk about Apple. Everyone, uh, everyone follows it. We've been talking about it quite a bit in here. We were talking about the potential for support. Last week, what I want, what I was saying is, you know, we're at a critical, we were at a critical level in here. That is this prior support had the potential to act as resistance. And I said, I wouldn't be looking to, to make a uh, decision based on earnings. To me, it's seemed like gambling but I, what I was hoping for was a gap down and it seemed more likely that it would gap lower with the declining five day 50 day moving average and this prior support acting as resistance but I also did point out the scenario of the possibility of trapping the shorts under there well obviously technical analysis 101 worked uh, or one in the end which was support broken tends to act as resistance uh, in in that downtrend and we continued lower so we were talking about some key levels on the weekly chart uh, where it had the potential to find some support. We were talking about 465 specifically because that was a 38.2% retracement of the lows from 2009 up to the highs of last year. And it's also the level where we had seen this uh, trend line uh, last touched in uh, mid-2011 that that had the potential to act as support. Well, obviously, there was no support found in that area. Uh, the stock opened near about 465. Um, let's just take a look in here. We, you know, we rallied uh, up towards that 465 and pretty much continued down towards the lows for the week. Um, so again, you know, technical analysis is about one, understanding key levels that the market uh, may take action where it might be uh, that support is found, but then what we need to do is look to shorter term time frames to look for the evidence that the buyers in fact have gained control. Now when we look at it, obviously that hasn't occurred. If we look at the two day action, the buyers you know stepped in briefly uh, Thursday morning, but then it broke below the volume weighted average price and now the volume weighted average price since the event since the earnings is at about four hundred fifty one dollars a share. Let's take a look again at the volume by price chart because this is something else that we had been talking talking about and here are still some some levels where this market may find support and it would make sense to look at shorter term time frames to see if uh, the evidence is actually there last year the high uh, or 2011 rather the high for the stock 
was right in here at about 426, uh, 426. Um, I don't have the number here right in front of me. Um, and we also have, so, so that I think is going to be an important level to watch for the stock. Possibly, you know, we, we break slightly below that down in towards this area here at about $420 a share where we had a little bit of support in January of 2012. But this volume by price, what we had been talking about is this air pocket in here and it really rapidly filled that in what we were talking about is that you know where it, where price has memory where a lot of uh, trading activity has occurred is basically where the price has memory and what that simply means is that people are more apt to, to assign a higher value uh, to that level and that basically it provides the opportunity to become support so in other words here you know last week we saw that the support came up into this area where we had all the supply it broke you know it broke down and found resistance there now the potential for support is about this 420 to 425 level I would say and then below that you know if it continues down uh, you can see the stock below $400 a share the good news is though again that it's not just an Apple market there are other stocks here that are behaving well we had Netflix uh, this week we respond very well to earnings and continued uh, significantly higher today as well uh, Google etc we're still in the middle of earnings season here the next two weeks should continue to have a lot of um, earnings reports being released to the market so uh, I would encourage you to make sure that you're aware of where all the stocks are uh, I'm sorry what the earnings dates are for all the stocks that you're looking at and don't get blindsided by earnings and I don't think it makes sense to make bets in front of earnings if you're gonna do it control your risk I think the way to do that with is options but there's risks uh, uh, inherent there as well with implied volatility so it's a complex game don't make it more difficult than it needs to be what we need to stay focused on are the trends the trends are your friends truly and as long as we remain in a pattern of higher highs and higher lows we want to be aware of the levels where it might bring further selling in if we break uh, below them but until then it's innocent till proven guilty and it doesn't mean you just buy it all each little high but instead to manage your risk have prudent stocks that's what we talk about each and every day in uh, Alpha Trends. In fact, some of the stocks we were looking at for today uh, included SBGI. We were in this from yesterday as it broke beyond $13.30. Um, if you're still in it, stop uh, probably about $13.60. Yandex we got involved in yesterday at $23.20. And, uh, and now we're going to raise our stop up to about $23.70. Um, SunPower was a watch list idea. I, th I still think it could get going perhaps a above uh, $8.25. So keep an eye on that one uh, next week. Sun Power could get going. I, and I would say a stop would go below this little uh, consolidation low at about $7.85. PNK is on our list too. This one's looking like it could break some resistance here just at about 16 bucks a share. If it can get above $16 a share, then I think you, you've got this potential for it to head north of 17 bucks. And, you know, a, a worst case stop down about $15.35. Otherwise, you might even want to get away with a stop uh, as close as 1575 um, we also uh, today in the chat room we're talking about uh, RSH this was a January effect stock we were looking at and today I had mentioned it right in here that it looked like it was getting ready to get going real nice movement in Radio Shack so come on by Alpha Trends uh, check out the chat room and um, thanks for tuning in have a good weekend